Hello and welcome. Today we would talk about Madhulika Liddell's novel Crimson City, which is a historical crime novel or a detective novel which was published in 2014. In this video, I would talk about the characters, the theme and the brief summary with no spoilers of this novel. I would expect students to read the novel themselves. This was not published very long back. This was published in 2014. So many students would want to read the text on their own. So I would talk about the author. Author um, Madhulika Little is highly acclaimed a historical detective fiction writer she writes novels and stories which revolve around 17th century mughal era in india and um, she the main character the main detective here is called muzaffar jung and muzaffar jung has gained now great popularity in fact he is the character that actually strings together a series of her stories and novels as well now um, she before becoming a full time writer she was in his hospitality industry she had also done advertising and she had also run private writing before she became a full time writer uh, she uh, it, I, in this novel in this video i would not give you the entire summary it is for you to read on your own but i would um, help you to read this novel faster and understand this better now the context of the novel is that this is set in the height of the mughal empire when the emperor shah jahan is ruling and aurangzeb seb is said to be in the deccan and he's annexing more land for the empire however since the novel is set in 1657 um and the introductory pages of the novel do tell us that um historically speaking aurangzeb was crowned the badshah in 1658 so the characters of the novel do not address aurangzeb as the future king in fact if you know history shah jahan had wanted darashiko to be the next king so they all expect darashiko to be the uh, next next badshah the next emperor so this novel is based on in you know at that time where people do not know what's going to happen of course they do not know that Aurangzeb is going to eventually take over the throne. So, in a way, the novel therefore offers social history. It talks about Delhi of the uh, 1600s. It talks about the different markets. It talks about the kind of people who were there, the strife between Hindus and Muslims, how people communicated with each other, how they travelled, etc. And it gives us a little glimpse of the court as well. It also talks about the brewing tensions between the communities, Hinduism and Muslim. uh people and um the protagonist also offers you know various places where is uh, you know, a critique of the time uh, she he sometimes talks about the empire sometimes talks about the great project sometimes he talks about the tensions between hindus and muslim so we see delhi through the eyes of the main protagonist the protagonist is called muzaffar jung he is a young detective he is the brother in law of gotwal and the gotwal's name is khan sahib khan sahib is a father figure to muzaffar jung so muzaffar jung listens to him very uh, very much muzaffar jung is also a loving husband he gives a lot of respect to his wife he has an eye for detail um, and he senses trouble sooner uh, than many others and he sometimes even able to tell who is going to die next so he is an instinct for detecting uh, trouble in a way and uh, he is not judgmental he is quite a modern man in the sense that he is a democratic man he doesn't look down upon hindus who are a political minority during this era and he likes also we also get to know that he likes coffee he likes um, he doesn't want to flaunt his money he is not a man of few means but he doesn't want to um, throw uh, show off his power or his riches uh we see delhi through his eyes and delhi through the novel is re referred to by its mughal or by its 17th century 16th century pronunciation where he, it was always called delhi and the delhi here is not the south delhi north delhi east delhi it's all old delhi um, essentially which is you know the northern part of today's delhi uh, so places uh, like jama masjid places like chandni chowk they are all mentioned um, at different places in the novel so um 
one of the chapters also discusses the empire and this is an interesting insight about how the empire was slowly crumbling uh, muzaffar jung at one point wonders how the bacha has been spending so badly on and extravagantly at uh, the you know the various uh, building project like the building of the uh, the taj mahal when he knows that he could have done something better for the empire i'll just read this quotation he says he wondered with growing despair how people would fail to see that the bacha had ruled too extravagantly spending the in empire's diminishing funds on ill afforded projects yes people a century from now people would still stare in awe at the taj mahal or the jama masjid or even kula mubarak but the money that had gone into them could have been used more wisely to prolong the life of the empire and this is so true when we see history and how it turned out that the mogul empire was ill prepared for all the assaults that happened to the empire later <coughs> the wife of muzaffar jung is called um, shireen she is very protected she helps muzaffar jung solve many of his, many of his cases they have a nice bond with each other i personally feel that gender relations may not have been so comfortable at this point but little makes us believe that they both have a very a uh, good camaraderie with each other the other two characters which are which are very close to uh, muzaffar jung are khan uh, who is the kotwal he has a lot of work he is overwhelmed by the work that he has and his sister and uh, muzaffar jung's sister called zinat begum zinat begum is jung's sister she is khan saheb's wife she does not have much to do much role in the novel but um, these are the three main characters who are important figures in jung's life the four murder victims in the novel are adil khan who is the first first person to die he's a cloth merchant who gets killed and eventually we get to know that the neighbor of adil basharat also dies uh, adil used to earlier stay in a different house he shifted and eventually we get to know the shifting of the houses is also important um in the way the novel actually progresses so it's adil the next person to die is basharat and the person to die afterwards is parvez uh, another death takes place in the novel is that of abdul jabbar uh, actually the novel has separate cases the death of abdul jabbar is not related to the deaths of adil basharat or parvez this is one plot and the death of abdul jabbar is another plot in fact there are three main cases which are dealt with in the novel the first case is the kidnapping of nandu um this is the son of lakshmi narayan lakshmi narayan has been getting threats that his son will be kidnapped and muzaffar jung solves that case the next solved the case that is solved by muzaffar jung is the death of abdul jabbar and the main case is that of adil um, whose neighbors basharat and parvez also die now i'll give you a very short summary uh, and i'll give you a plot of the uh, the novel and i'll tell you how it begins um so the first murder is that of adil who is found dead in the middle of the night and after his death his shop has been ransacked but all the items in this uh, shop are intact and there's no robbery even though his documents are looked into nothing is stolen um and once muzaffar jung team is making progress kotwal tells him that to not interfere and muzaffar jung does not interfere because he has so much respect for the kotwal meanwhile <clears throat> Muzaffar Jung gets to know this Hindu man who is the right hand man of uh, Adil Khan who is called Suraj Bhan and through Suraj Bhan Muzaffar Jung thinks that you know Hindus are not as bad who are a political minority but Muzaffar Jung starts respecting the honesty and intelligence of Suraj Bhan and in fact they eventually have a good understanding with each other um <clears throat> through Suraj Bhan he gets to know of another case which is the a case which as i told you was the uh, kidnapping of nandu so he takes up this case um and while he is investigating he finds out that lakshmi narayan had earlier lent money to an uh, another money another person called jagannath um some just some time before he starts getting all these threatening notes from an unknown source which keeps telling him that his son will be kidnapped unless and until he gives some money 
and it turns out that this the money is actually the same the same amount that he is returned to jagannath has been asked from lakshmi narayan and which is the first clue for muzaffar jung as muzaffar jung uh, treats the case further he gets to know that the note that uh, that has been sent to them has a particular texture the thread of the note has a particular texture there is uh, there is uh, some color on it which is actually neel which is actually indigo and he gets to know that the note has come from this market from the dyers market which called katra neel so he goes to katra neel he finds out and eventually he gets to know that it is jagannath who had earlier returned money to um, lakshmi narayan um, but he gets in touch with the caretaker of the baby and with the help of the caretaker of the baby the caretaker of the baby is called subhadra with the help of subhadra he was able to kidnap the son of lakshmi narayan so small little clues like the texture of the threatening note or the thread which is involved or even the brick which is associated with this whole um, with how the threatening note had actually traveled to lakshmi narayan's place all these small little things become clues for muzaffar jung to actually crack the case so like any other detective muzaffar jung has an eye for detail he no detail is actually unimportant for him the brick the thread the paper all of the things lead him to the final perpetrator so this is where the first uh case ends the next case is that of the case of um abdul jabbar the killing of abdul jabbar now abdul jabbar has been found as i told you he has been found dead in a hammam this hammam was actually owned by abdul jabbar and as muzaffar jung investigates the case further people have been thinking that this is suicide but the circumstantial evidence makes muzaffar jung convinced that this is not actually a murder and um, so basically muzaffar jung concludes that jabbar's family is not going to benefit from his death because his own money all the money that muzaff that the uh, abdul jabbar owns would not actually be inherited by the family because of a legal uh, because of a legal reason so people think of abdul jabbar's death as a suicide but he says that no some other foul play is involved so he takes a garb he gets a disguise he actually talks to people and he gets to talk to some of his servants and as he talks to his servants he gets to know muzaffar jung gets to know that abdul jabbar was a cruel man he was so bad to his servants uh, in particular that there was this case that he had even killed an 8 year old boy he was he had flogged him to death and this child had been killed for a very trivial reason the reason for this the killing of this boy was that uh, inadvertently he had come in front of one of his horses and the horse had become injured um and this led to abdul jabbar being very very angry and he had killed this 8 year old boy this 8 year old boy course was called wahid his father was faraz who was abdul jabbar's um servant and the the novel actually gives you very sensitive builds a very sensitive picture of the killing of wahid which makes the reader feel very bad for the servant faraz and wahid and we automatically do not um do not have sympathy for abdul jabbar and as muzaffar jung also finds out what really happened he felt that even though he can deliver justice he can de- deliver faraz um, uh, to be executed or to be punished for his death he for abdul jabbar's death he felt that he should not be doing that so he feels that non intervention in the case would actually be delivery of justice so this makes us again go into some depths of what is justice how justice should be delivered and this is also a, an interesting insight of the mughal era that we now have started to assume that the right to life is a basic human right but it is interesting to see that back in the mughal era a child could actually legally be flogged or beaten to death by their master and nothing would have been done by the state uh so uh, so these are you know ways in which you ponder about history while you read in the no- this novel 
Finally, we reach this case, the death of Adil, Basharat and Parvez. These deaths are interconnected. As I told you, I would not be giving you the entire suspense of the novel, but I would still tell you that these murders are connected and they happen because the killers, just like Faraz, you know, the killers were also motivated by personal pain and revenge. And it is a woman who is behind these killings and we are given exciting backstories of, you know, these women as well. And at the end, the novel, you know, ends on a very exciting plot point where everything gets together and there's a chase and the perpetrators are caught while they are actually on a run, etc. So, uh, you know, like an, another... Uh, the other aspect of a particular of a well done detective novel is to also incorporate elements of adventure which madhulika little does very successfully so you would have to read the suspense this about this case very on your own i would tell you of another theme which is very very important for this novel now madhulika little finds many ways of keeping the reader hooked like when she talks about this sufi peer actually the novel ends on a hopeful note where Suraj Bhan and Muzaffar Jung are talking to each other and they talk about how they talk about the Sufi peer called Sarmad Kashani. Sarmad Kashani who is actually a historical figure who uh, had a lot of influence on a number of people and it seems that he was also in he was you know one pe person influencing Dharashiko also who was the uh, apparent was the heir apparent so if the history had turned out to be different Sarmad Kishani would be known to many people even today and Dharashiko would also be known to people today but we we get to know so in the novel it is projected that you know that Dharashiko is going to be the king and Sarmat Kashani is slowly becoming powerful uh, and he's become, becoming popular but you know as the people belonging to 20, 21st century we know that this is not how history turned out so it ends on a very ironic note the last part of the novel is actually where uh, Muzaffar Jung and Suraj Bhana are talking and they thank God for the fact that Shehzada Dara Shiko is actually going to be good for the empire. And I read this extract. I thank the gods for it. I thank every single one of them that the man who will one day sit on the throne is a broad-minded man, a man who does not hold another man's religion against him. The Shehzada Dara Shiko will be good for the empire. He finished the voice fervent. Amen. Uh, Muzaffar said and so we know that you know it did not happen um, Darashiko could not become the em emperor Darashiko was actually killed very brutally by his own brother and even Sarmat Kishani was executed in 1661 because he was supposed to be an atheist so we know that you know the religious strife was so high in this time that uh, the one who became the king was a person who did hold men's religion against against them each other you know men who, who held men accountable for the religion that they followed and discriminated on that basis so one important theme uh, which we uh, see throughout the novel is the commentary on religion and comment and, and the religious differences which actually uh, which actually keeps people separate and uh, there is this one extract in the novel where Muzaffar Jung is speaking to Shireen and they are discussing the differences between Hindus and Muslims and Muzaffar Jung checks his wife and tells him that uh, tells her that you know the people should not be treated differently and this is the extract and he it says if we regard the Hindus as different they regard us as different too too different to be humane too and Muzaffar uh, shrugged sitting back after he had eaten there are men of all faiths who cling too closely to their faiths to let humanity in the way and there are men who remember that faith is a personal thing something that should raise you above petty things like whether or not a man shares the same beliefs as you do that is what i believe religion should be a way of making ourselves better human beings not self-righteous not standing in judgment over others and this is how this is many of one of the many extracts which talks about religious differences in the novel i hope you read the novel on your own and you enjoy it
do please let me know how you liked this video and whether you would want me to make videos on other novels that you're reading or with your the ones you are struggling with thank you so much i'll meet you at some other time